Hi, this is Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. In this video, I'm excited to be able to give you a sneak peek inside the brand new, much anticipated, much talked about Luminar AI. I have a beta copy and I'm eager to show you what's inside. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to mention is that Luminar AI is a brand new build. So if you have previous versions like Luminar 3 or 4, they will not translate into Luminar AI. You will have to upgrade. If you're not familiar with those differences, please watch the video below that I link to where I explain the new features of Luminar AI. So the first thing I want to show you is one of the main improvements. And this is a big reason why they decided to do a rebuild and not keep going with the existing Luminar 4 and upgrading it. One of the, the things they've been criticized the most about in terms of Luminar is speed. So speed of loading the images and speed of opening raw images. Now I shoot with Fuji and Fuji has profiles built in so they take even longer. So I'm going to show you in real time how quickly this program works now. So I'm going to add an entire folder of images. So let me find it. So I shot some images in Japan and you can see, I'm going to show you how many images are in this folder. Uh, let me get over here. So you can see that in the Japan raw file folder, there are 2,788 images. So I'm actually going to add all of these. So there's going to be even more. So I'm going to add the main Japan folder and it's going to index all of these images and add them to Luminar. So let's see how long that takes to do. I'm literally going to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, 11, 1,000, 12, 1,000, Okay, so that took about 13 seconds, and you can see that there are 2,900 images in here. Okay, so that's pretty impressive. I know that if I added that many images to Lightroom, it would take a lot longer than that to uh, import them and to, for Lightroom to index them. So number one, right off the bat, the speed of importing the images into Luminar is much improved, and they load almost immediately. So I'm going to say number one is a big plus. So that's a big yes So in the win column. Next, I've created a little album here of a few example images that I want to run through some of the new AI tools and show you what's inside of Luminar AI. The first one I've already edited, and it's this little field of lavender that I shot in um, Western Canada. So I've already applied a template and made some adjustments, and I want to show you the before and after. So take a look at the original image. That's the before, that's the after. So the before is a little bit lackluster. You can see it's kind of dull, the sky is boring, and it just doesn't have really much punch. Okay, so that's the after image. And how easily and quickly I was able to create that is going to blow your mind. I'm going to undo the history and go back to the original. And then I'm gonna show you the template that I used. So it was under landscape. So templates are now replacing looks. If you've used Luminar before, they used to call them uh, presets and then they were called looks. Now they're called templates. So yes, the terminology is a little bit confusing and hopefully they will stay with templates. And the idea is that Luminar AI is analyzing your image to determine what kind of image it thinks it is. So here it's indicating that it thinks my image is a landscape, which it is. So it's giving me some suggestions for different templates. So I've already played around with a few of these different templates and the one that I found that worked best on this image was in the sunset collection because it is a sunset and the Toscana one. So you can try all kinds of different ones and see what they do just by clicking on them and just like looks previously there's a slider that you can sort of minimize the entire look and just tone it down. But I liked the Toscana one. So what happens with Toscana is it kind of gave it this pink sky and it did a sky replacement automatically. So look at that. Right off the bat, I've done one click and that's how my image looks. And it works really well with this sort of lavender plant that's in the foreground to bring out that purple. Now, for those of you that are concerned that there's going to be all AI and you've got no ability to adjust your images anymore, 
worry no longer. So I'm going to go into the edit mode like normal, like if you've used Luminar 4 or 3 in the past. All of the same panels on the right that you were used to in Luminar 4 are still here. Okay? And you'll notice that any of the ones that are, are highlighted are the ones that are being applied with this template. So same thing, I can dial this down and just lower the uh, effect of this template. I can also add it to my favorites just by clicking this little heart here, which I'm going to do because I'm going to use it again. I can change the sky. So all of the things that are are being done to this image currently, I can adjust or or change. Okay, so if I want to play with the, the settings a little bit, I can do so. If I want to mask it, and you'll notice that mood is now where the LUTs are located. So it is applied a LUT or a color, a lookup table called Sunset Miami, and it's applied it quite liberally. So if I want less pink, I can just dial that down. So any of the settings that have been applied with the templates are fully adjustable. You can go in and add any more, like I added some golden hour and I added some foliage enhancer to this one which I thought was great to bring out the leaves and they, these are actually grapevines in grape country. Okay, so you can bring that out, you can increase your details. So all of your same filters and things that you enjoy doing with Luminar are still there and you can still make adjustments as you go. Okay, I can even do a sky enhancer and bring that out even more. And really quickly and easily, my image is finished. Another feature I want to show you um, that's new is Composition AI. So Composition AI analyzes your image and helps you with the cropping. Okay, so there's a couple of things here that are different. You can see perspective. So if I click on this, it's going to adjust the tilt of the image because it's a little bit crooked. So that's nice. It's automatically fixed it for me. And this Composition AI, if you click on it, what it's going to do is suggest a possible cropping for you. Okay, so how this was created was thousands and thousands of images were sent to Skylum and analyzed before and after so that it could learn about how to crop images. Okay, so it's cropped off a little bit of the sky and if I'm happy with that I can leave it or I can say okay I want to make sure that little thing on the left is there and then just hit okay and I'm good to go. So quickly before and after, I'm quite happy with that image. Okay. And as usual, you can save this as a new template of your own. Anytime you make edits, you're, you're absolutely able to save your edits as a new template. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my catalog. And let's take a look at this image, which is kind of lackluster. And I'm going to apply the same template. So you'll notice a few things about this one. It's made it really pink as it did on the last one. So if I'm not happy with the pink, I know where to find that. That's under the LUT, so I can just dial the pink down. Or I can pick a totally different LUT and make a totally different look to this image. I can also do things like increase the contrast or adjust my exposure and so on to, to, to suit. I think for this one, I'm just going to add a little edge vignette real quick here. Now I'm working really quickly in this video. This is not really a how-to. I just want to show you what's new and what you can do in the program. So keep that in mind. I'm not showing you how to do it yet. Okay. Another new feature inside of Luminar AI is Atmosphere AI. Okay, so you can add things like fog and layered fog and mist. The difference is you could do that in the previous versions, but this one is a little bit smarter. So let's take a look at what happens if I add mist. Okay, so I'm going to add it pretty strong. And this is what I do a lot of times when I just want to see what things are doing is I'll add it really strong and then dial it back. But watch what happens when I dial up the depth. Okay, so it literally is finding the layers in my image. Notice the tree on the left, the fog is now going around it. Okay. Let's try haze. Okay, now the haze is sort of in the middle of the picture, like it's in the valley, right? Very natural looking. Okay, so the Atmosphere AI really does a good job of analyzing your image and placing the fog in the right place. Okay. Again, like anything, you can dial it up or down. 
to see where it goes. You also have the ability to mask and they've changed it now so this the masking tool is here and you can either paint or erase and using all the same um, tools as before, painting, radial mask, or gradient mask. You will notice that the uh, luminosity mask is not there anymore, okay, so that one has been removed. Okay, so that is the Atmosphere AI. I'm just going to reset that. Okay, so if I decide, okay, the sky is not right, I can, I can turn this down, or I can relight the scene to match the sky. Okay. But overall, again, it was a pretty quick fix from before which was kind of a blah, drab looking image to something really punchy and colorful. The whole idea behind Luminar AI is that you can get to your after image quickly and easily and it's fun. But if you still want to do all the editing manually, you can do that as well. So it gives you the best of both worlds. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for this image, I'm going to go into the essentials templates landscape and again I've kind of gone through these to find which one works best on this image and there's a couple of them in this set so I'm going to try the simple one and that brings out the detail in the water and the boat a little bit better or the fast fix I think either of those work really well for this image you can still do the before and after using the uh, backslash button or using this little dial up here while you're in the template mode. So I'm gonna go with simple on this one and then I'm gonna add some more edits. So we're gonna just have some fun with this one. I like to add some birds just for fun. Let's put them up here because I wanna see what happens if I add fog and there's birds in the sky, if the fog is gonna understand where the birds are. Okay, so once again, click on atmosphere AI and I'm gonna dial up the fog. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna go all the way again so you can see, but look at it, it's covering the birds, okay, nicely. But you'll notice that it does recognize that the birds need to be covered as well. So even though they've been added after the fact, the birds are being uh, incorporated into this Atmosphere AI. So that's great. Let's dial this down a little bit. And one last thing I'm gonna do is just a little crop. So back to the composition AI and let's see how well it works this time. Okay, so it's just come in a little bit tighter so we don't have so much space around. If I like that composition, I just hit enter and it's good to go. Okay, so once again, templates, a couple of elements, and we have a much more interesting image. The next one I want to show you is just sort of the variety of templates that are available. You can see if you scroll all the way to the bottom here, there's cinematic, there's some artistic ones, and then there's the categories down at the bottom. So I'm going to choose macro. You'll see that that's an option. And as expected, it's going to give you things that give you more detail. So it's enhancing and punching up the detail. So I remember this one was the one I liked because I favorited it. Okay, so you can see how much detail and sharpening that's adding and it works really well for this macro image. And of course I can then go in and make any final adjustments I want in the edit module as well. With this next image, I want to show you some of the new portrait AI tools. If you have Luminar 4, you'll be familiar with some of these because they were incorporated in the last version. These ones here, face light, and slim face and some of the skin retouching you'll be familiar with. What is new and I want to go into particularly into the face one is the eyes. Okay so the iris has been enhanced here. So let me just do a before and after so you can see what what enhancements have been made especially to her face and her eyes. Okay? I love this new and iris enhance. I'm going to come in even closer so you can see what it's doing. So I've already applied a fair amount of skin softening fairly liberally, but you can see that she still has pores on her face and it hasn't eliminated all the detail. I also used the new cloning and erase tool and they did a really nice job on some blemishes that she had on her face. The iris enhancer here, you can actually choose the color of the eyes. So I'm going to go back to original. Her eyes were very dark, almost black. And even when I turned up this iris visibility slider, which is the lightening of the iris, it didn't really do much to brighten her eyes and give her a sparkle. 
So I played around with the different colors. Obviously, I'm not going to do blue or you can even do some crazy things like cat eyes, <laughs> which will work great if I'm editing an image of my cat. But the honey is kind of this amber color. It works really well for her because her eyes are brown, but it gave that golden highlights. Okay. Iris Flare is th this little highlight at the bottom of the eye. So if I turn it all the way up, you can see what's happening there. So often when you get a reflection in the eyes, you'll see this lightening at the bottom. So it's actually really natural looking. It keeps the eyes natural looking. So those are two sliders that are new and I was very excited about in this version. The final thing I want to show you is the body AI. So once again, I'm still in the portrait module. I've already done some adjustments to the face, to our eyes and so on, and slimmed us a little bit in the faces just to take a look at the before. Right? You could see the faces are a little bit less round, even opening the eyes a little bit, which is great. Right? Now let's look at the body AI. Right? So body AI is a, something that's been in Photoshop for a long time. It's called Liquify, but it takes a lot of work to do Liquify. You have to do lots of masking and brushing and so on. And it's very time consuming and considered more of an advanced technique. With body AI, it, it's, it knows where the abdomen is and where the body is. So I'm going to take it to the extreme just so you can see what it's doing is it's crunching in the middle here and you can see that it's, it's also affecting what he's holding in his hands and he's becoming really distorted. So we're taking that too far, but I just want to show you where, what it's doing in terms of it's looking for the body. Okay, now in doing so, it's also stretched our heads out, so that's not a good thing. So I'm going to scale it back a little bit and try and give us something a bit more natural looking like before and after right now if you find that the head is going a little too big we can go back and do some slim of the face but I think when we zoom out that looks pretty natural right? so before and after one more time just a little more flattering without going over the top so just to summarize, again, some of the things that I'm really excited about inside of Luminar AI, and this is just an early beta testing, so they're still going to be adding more features yet. The speed at which it loads your images and works, the templates and how they analyze your image and give you suggestions on how to edit it, and some of the new AI tools like Body, Iris, and Atmosphere AI work amazingly well. So I'm really impressed. If you haven't already made your decision whether or not to upgrade to Luminar AI or to purchase it for the first time, I hope that this video has helped you in your decision making and you can get off the fence and join me inside the Luminar AI camp. Take care. Until next time, we'll see you again.